A part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step, to various international organizations of which the United Nations is the outstanding but far from the only example. Now, here are the aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many-faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare, the beauties and the absolute necessity of peace, peace always on communist terms, of course. And ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. So brush the insider's dust out of your eyes, my friends, and the communist soap suds out of your brain, and ask yourselves in all honesty, what on earth is wrong with the United States simply minding its own business? Are with having its foreign policy function primarily for the safety and benefit of the American people. <laughs> Which is exactly what we had done for the first 140 years of our existence as a nation to the incredible advantage of ourselves and everybody else. Everybody, that is, except a numerically small clique of power-lusting conspirators who had somehow inflicted themselves on a gullible world. While we turn to a very brief summarization of what we hope the John Birch Society will help and even sometimes lead the American people to accomplish during the next 15 years. One, our first and most important specific undertaking should be to restore the complete independence of the United States. This. This includes our resolution to get us out of the United Nations and get the United Nations out of the United States. <laughs> Two, we must once again make our money freely redeemable in gold at some realistic price. And we must take all practicable legislative steps to prevent a recurrence of the enormous thievery and other subversive crimes that have been perpetrated on the American people through a contrived inflation by every president from Franklin Roosevelt through Richard Nixon. Three. Three. We should reduce the number of government bureaus, of government civilian employees, and the whole quantity of government 
by at least 50 percent. And, and we should achieve at least this much reduction in proper fashion through gradually convincing a majority of the American people of the wisdom of such a course. Four, we should withdraw all American troops from every spot on earth that is not American soil except when and where such troops may be required as decided by Congress to protect American lives and property from criminal vandalism. Five. Five, we should get government out of the areas and functions and activities where government does not belong. Again, again, all steps to this end should be taken gradually, but nevertheless just as rapidly as enough of the American people can be persuaded to support such progress. Any such achievement will require a truly massive educational force but well, that's exactly what we hope to build during the next 15 years. We could go ahead for at least 100 numbered items, but the John Birch Society will undoubtedly be working on more than that many specific projects, which will be laid out in its bulletins before another 180 months will have rolled around. And all of them will fit into, all of these projects will fit into the general pattern indicated by the five major objectives listed above. So let's really wind up this marathon monologue with one final thought. None of us can guarantee anything about what the future will bring. Your speaker knows what a job we have before us to rid our country of the scourge of communism within the next few years, and then to go ahead on our constructive program so well that 15 years from now we shall already be entering an era of far less government of a much sounder sense of responsibility, and, with God's help, of a better world. But I sincerely believe that it can be done, and this much I know. If every man and woman in this audience should leave here tonight, feeling in his or her own mind and heart that it can and must be, be, do must be done, then it surely will be. And so, all of you patriots of good character, good conscience, and noble ideals, whom we can reach with the filmed version of this speech in a thousand other audiences, it is with a great deal of confidence and energizing will to win that we invite you to join us in our epic undertaking. For to all of you great, wonderful friends in this present audience, I certainly extend my very deep thanks indeed for so much patience and attention. Thank you and good night.